This is the Prestigious Initiative. Welcome. I'm Chris Bean, and here with me is Chris Kent. Hello, Mr. Kent. Hello, sir. Today we're going to be exploring the power of creativity and how you can use it to help to transform your life. This will be our first four-part series as we dive into strategies for unlocking your creative potential. In today's episode, we will be in exploring the importance of creativity and its impact on personal and professional growth. Creativity is not just limited to artists and musicians. It's a fundamental human trait that can be nurtured and developed, which means if you don't feel like you are a very creative type person, that's okay because it doesn't. it's not something you're born with and you either have or you don't. You can nurture it, you can develop it, you can grow more creative as you journey through your life. Being creative allows us to think outside the box, to solve problems, to innovate. Think about any problem, anytime you were presented with a problem. You probably, in your head, I think we talked about this a little bit last time, but we in your head, you kind of run down, okay, this, I could do this, I could do that, I could do this, and you have all these different options that, that are presented to you. Those are, that's your creativity at work, at play even, if, if you wanted to go that way. You are creatively trying to find a solution to that problem. And anytime you have that problem that you don't necessarily have a fallback, yep, if this happens, I do that. And I'm sure you have 50 things or 500 things that you, you know, if this happens or when this happens, you do this. A happens, I do B. When B happens, I do C. But how many other things throughout your day, your your week, your month, whatever, do you experience a problem and then think, man, that's new. I don't know what to do. So you have to creatively come up with a solution to that. Now, odds are the first solution that you come up with, probably not the best. Maybe sometimes you have to ask for help. You help to pull in other people's creative energy into you or to, to help you solve that problem. But that's where your innovation, your creativity comes in at or comes from or is allowed to be demonstrated in your life. By understanding the different forms of creativities and how they can manifest themselves, we can tap into your own or you can tap into your own creative abilities. I'm sure if you were to challenge yourself to sit down and think what do you do that perhaps is more creative or more innovative than what other people do? You would come up with a list. And those type of things are where you are more creative. Everybody would have, like Mr. Ken, I'm sure you have some things you're more creative. I, I would say you're more creative, <coughs> excuse me, on <clears throat> a number of things than I am. Why right, Would you agree? Yeah, maybe not more creative, maybe just differently creative. And I think... Part of what we're talking about here right off the get-go is to understand creativity and the fact that it isn't necessarily relegated to certain things. I think we mentioned it, or you mentioned it previously, we think of creativity as an art or music or, you know, uh, writing, things like that. And those are different forms of creativity, but creativity isn't just relegated to those things. You can be creative in many different ways. If you think about the definition of what it is to create is to bring something into existence or to create something, to make something that isn't already there. And so creativity doesn't have to just exist in those things. And so the start of that is to understand what creativity is. And to bring back what you said, I wouldn't say that I'm more creative. I would say that we are both creative in different ways. I don't, that, not to compare who's more or less, but you're, you are creative in different ways than I am creative in. And we, we can you know, appreciate and work off of and learn from each other in different ways too. So I think that's a, a huge part of it too. Like you said, some people will, will tell themselves or even tell other people that, you know, I'm not creative or I'm not, uh, uh, I'm not good at, at making things up. I'm not good at being innovative. Well, I don't think that maybe they're just looking at it differently or I don't want to say the wrong way, but when you really try to break down what creativity is, I think that's when you're able to dive even deeper and kind of explore your own creativity and then also to appreciate other people's creativity because I may be 
creative in one way that you're not, but it's much more impressive or astonishing or captivating when I can see the ways that you are creative that I'm not creative in too, and, and vice versa. So again, to start off, I wouldn't say we're, one's more than the other. We, you are more than I am or I'm more than you are, but I would say that we are creative in different ways. And it's amazing to be able to look at anyone we know and whether they have figured it out or not, trying to see the ways that they are creative and how they're able to run with that creativity and do different things with it. And that's something that maybe we overlook is, is it's easy to say, I'm not creative. I don't create things very well, but something that you do is more creative than someone else's at that one thing. You just don't see it the same way. You don't think that what you're doing is creative, but creativity can come from many different places. So I know that kind of ran from what you had asked originally, but I think that's an important part of this conversation too, is that we're not just, um, confining creativity to art or or music or or writing or whatever it is it's tons of different ways that people are creative and, and able to tap into their creative kind of energy yeah and you know <clears throat> you talked a little bit about just in just there about when people tell themselves oh i'm not creative i can't do that and to me that is a lie that people are telling themselves and they tell themselves that lie enough and they start to believe that and then they fulfill that which means I they tell themselves I'm not creative I can't do that and then they don't do those things and then they can't do those things because they don't think they can do them and of course that's a that's a terrible place so you have to be very careful about the self-talk that you do with yourself and if if one of those things if you say I can't do this or I'm not th that or whatever it is you will start to believe that you you know, your brain cannot tell the difference between, you know, it telling itself that or somebody else telling it, it starts to believe those things. And so just be very careful if you, I, I'm not creative. I can't, you know, okay, well, maybe you're not creative in that realm, but where are you? Where is your creativity lie, lie at for you? You know, maybe you're, you're an outside the box thinker when it comes to solving problems. Maybe you're an outside the box thinker when it comes to not doing work. You can think of you know, however many other creative ways to not do work. Okay, well, I mean, that's, you're creative. Maybe maybe tweak that and tour that into maybe a little bit more productive use, but you're creative nonetheless. So just because you're not creative in art or music or writing or whatever it is, doesn't mean you're not creative. Everybody's creative just in your own unique way. And once you understand creativity, not only for yourself, but in other people too, you can 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 kind of start to, explore ways to embrace that creativity you know embracing your creativity it can open many doors to new possibilities behind those doors can be challenges and creative blocks and things that can stop you from getting better but it just requires more creativity to figure your way around those things and kind of kind of navigate those roadblocks and stuff so even though there may be challenges when you're you're attempting or pursuing your creativity think of it not as a a end point but something that's going to push you to be even more creative you know you, you hear a lot of people talk about creativity and people that seem to take nothing and create something from it and i've listened to several interviews and podcasts with people who talk about being creative writers and things like that and sometimes putting yourself in a box forces you to be more creative than it would be to have everything at your disposal because you only have a set number of things to work with. And so you really have to be creative with how you're going to use those things to eventually develop the outcome that you want or create the thing that you want too. So even that as a challenge may seem frustrating, but I would argue that it's going to stretch you creatively and make you even better at being creative. And when you come across those roadblocks, embrace that creativity and run with it. See where it goes. There is no set um, parameter on what creativity is. So Maybe you'll think of something that no one else has ever thought of, or maybe you'll think of, you know, something entirely new to you, or maybe you'll think of something someone has thought of before, and then you'll change that a little bit and, and, and run with it. So embracing that creativity and, and, and accepting the challenges that might come up when you're uh, trying to be more creative, I think it's going to just make you better, not better, but it's going to help you to expand your creativity and maybe really bring you into those roots. And, and like you said, Mr. Bean, we talked about even previously the self-talk of you go to work and you say, oh, I, I hate this job. I don't like this job. Well, 
you're going to start to feel it even more because that's what you're telling yourself. So it's the same type of thing in situation when you tell yourself, hey, I'm not creative. You're going to start to believe that eventually and it's going to stifle that creativity and you're going to want to to avoid being creative rather than embracing it and engaging with it and accepting the challenges and really trying to to grow creatively, which is which is what we're talking about here today. You know, and, and you talked about putting restraints on it. I heard a story, I think it was MIT, they had their graduates or their their class or their students write haikus, and haikus are already, you know, relatively difficult to write anyways. On top of that, they said they had to write a haiku about spam, like spam the the, the luncheon meat. And, you know, I don't know if there's 400 or 4,000 or whatever different haikus about spam, the, the, the lunch meat. Like, haikus are already tough. And then you write it about the spam, the lunch, like, wow. You know, who would have thought that putting those restric- restrictions, those, you know, put yourself in that small of a box. Okay, what can you do in this box? Okay, well, you know, all these things come about from that. That was, I heard that, and that was a really interesting, you know, talk about, creativity they put themselves forcefully forcefully or, or or willfully into a very small box okay write a haiku about spam the lunch meat okay what huh sure fair enough they you know they did again i don't remember if, if, if there was a four i think it was either 400 or or, or 4 000. i can't imagine it's 4 000 though but haikus about spam because they put those restrictions on so sometimes you may feel like you have the restrictions I have to do this, but it has to be this way and then this certain way and this, all these things that you have to do for work or whatever it is. Let those things help to foster that creativity because it would be like going to the store to, 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 you know, to, to buy lunch, talking about lunch meat, going to buy lunch. You go there and they can make you anything. Like the, the list of things that they can make is like, you know, 500 feet long. It's got 1,200 items on it. Oh my gosh, I'm overwhelmed. I don't know what to get. You stand there and you wait and you wait and you wait and you wait. Holy cow, I don't know what to do. Or you go to Subway and if you go to Subway, I mean, probably you're going to get a sub. Okay, there's some classifications in there. Okay, fine. But, you know, it's not like I can have a sub or I can have pizza or I can have what, you know, whatever else. Like it's the options aren't limitless. They're limited. And because of those limited options, you can be creative within that. (coughs) So don't let that, or those rather, limitations hold you back from being creative. Let those be stepping stones to build your creativity. Let your creativity flow even within whatever limited restrictions or, or limiting restrictions are placed upon you. Absolutely, yeah. Lean into those challenges. Let them ignite your inspiration and, you know, kind of foster that mindset of innovation. Work with what you have and find a way to go through it. I'm not saying it's easy, but I think you'll come out of it more creative and having kind of uh, developed that creativity even more. So speaking of developing creativity, this really ties into something we talked about previously as well. Uh, Kind of think about ways that you can um, encourage that creativity or nurture that creativity. So one way is to create an environment that supports that creativity. So we talked about having spaces for specific things or places that you go when you're doing a certain thing and habits and routines for when you're trying to be creative. It's really helpful if you can put yourself in that mindset. You know, if I'm trying to be creative, for me personally, I'm not going to go into a crowded space with lots of noise and lots of people and lots of things going on at once because I'm not going to be able to focus and be distracted and it's going to be hard for me to really engage with my creativity. So if I want to try to be creative, I'm going to go somewhere that's quieter, there's less going on, I'm able to think better. Or if I'm looking to challenge myself, maybe I will add one extra variable in there to try to be creative within that different environment too. So make sure you're aware of, if you're really trying to become more creative and nurture that creativity, be aware of the things you're 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 surrounding yourself with and whether or not those things are going to be helpful, helpful to your creativity. And if they aren't, remove them if you can. Or, like I said, if you're trying to challenge it in that way, just do a little bit at a time. Don't overwhelm yourself at once because you want to nurture it very carefully rather than kind of shatter it and then try to build it back up again as far as, you know, trying to to get better. Um, so 
that's something you can explore and, and work on just as all these things are. We It's not a prescribed way to do it. And there's different ways that we're creative. So I can't tell someone who is really good at crocheting how to start to crochet better because I don't know anything about crocheting. However, someone that could crochet something that's incredible, that's super creative. They may not think that, but I think it is because it's something I can't do. But again, make sure you find ways that can help you develop that and really try to put yourself in the best position to stretch that creativity. Yeah, and you know, you talked about being in like a, a big open loud space. I, there's some people that they'll go to the coffee shop to write their novel or whatever it is, and some people go to a retreat retreat in the in the cabin in the woods by themselves for you know whatever. So I think really understanding where your how your surroundings affect you, and perhaps not only how your surroundings affect you, but how the time of day affects you. I know a lot of people that kind of keep a track, a log that, you know, I'm more creative from this time to from 10, 15 to 1145 in the morning time. That's where all my career, that's all my creative energy and potential. That's where I'm, I'm most creative then. Okay. And then, you know, you just strategically contour your day to allow that creativity to flow when you are most creative. And how does that come in? Well, you check in with yourself. Okay. I had some really good ideas at this time. Okay, write down the time. You know, I didn't really have many ideas at this time. Okay, then, you know, you you keep a log of that and then you start to see some trends there or, you know, you ate this food and this, you know, whatever. There's all kinds of different ways that you can think about how to nurture and pay attention to when those creativity times kind of come to you. And I think that really that is kind of key is, understanding you might be more creative at this time than you are at that time. And you might be more creative in this space than you are in that space. And just take note of those. And when the time comes that you want to be creative, you have something you want to create or to fulfill or whatever, try to pull on those strings to be in that place or to try to make it around that. Now, can't do those all the time, I understand. But best you can, try to contour it, shape it, so that you can have those most creative moments when you know you are more creative and in the places that you are most creative. And that extends beyond to the physical. You know, this day and age, the digital world too is important too. Or Sorry, the digital world is also important. So you go to your computer to work, you go to your tablet to work, don't have all your notifications on, don't have your, your, your screen cluttered with everything. Try to give yourself space or... You know, again, if that was what helps you be most creative, put as many things as you can out in front of you or have a lot of things going on. It, it really just comes down to you and, you know, having rituals of this is what I do. I get up, I do this, I do this, I do this, and then I sit down. And, you know, like you said, Mr. Bean, if you find yourself to be most uh, creative at a certain point in time, maybe develop a, a pathway for you. Okay, it's this time for this. I need to do this, this, and this. I'm going to sit down and try to... to to, to be creative in whatever sense it is. So being consistent with developing rituals, practices, and really finding out what's best for you is going to help you to start to stretch that creativity and just really focus on that growth mindset. You know, think about how you're going to become more creative or what you're going to do with your creativity that day and really try to bring that to life. Yes, sir. I think that's a, a great introduction to the power of creativity. Make sure you turn in, tune in next time where we're going to talk a little bit more about overcoming some creative blocks. And until next time, stay prestigious.